Hello readers, I'm Amy. Welcome back to my channel. There have been some changes, obviously, to my bookshelf. It's in rainbow order. My hair is pink. Getting ready for that Kesha concert. Got my nose piercing. There's just been a lot of changes lately. I'm doing good. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Today's video is, I think, technically sponsored. I'm not totally up on all of the sponsorship language and stuff, but Eric from Breakeven Books was asking people if anyone was interested in working with a used bookstore and becoming an affiliate. I'm like, yes I am, give me the details. And so Second Sale messaged me. They gave me a coupon code so I could get some books and make this kind of little book haul to promote them. And there will be an affiliate code linked down below. So if you choose to shop through that link, you will be supporting me. I will get a very small kickback from that. So thank you ahead of time. Um, basically, I think they sell some new books as well, but their main focus is selling used books. They do recycle like a million pounds of paper a year, which is awesome. They're trying to talk about being eco-conscious and eco-friendly and they just have some really great book deals. Initially, I was looking at um, two books by Octavia Butler. I think, I want to say Parable of the Sower is a duology. If I'm wrong, forgive me, correct me, but I know there's at least two books in that series, and I was going to get those. They were like maybe 10 bucks a piece, newer in good condition, and then I started looking through my Amazon wish list and looking at some books that I forgot about, so I decided to look those up, and I found four books, three of which I can never find in print anywhere. So just based on that, I am super impressed with Second Sale. Also, the person that I was chatting with was super friendly to talk to and just, I've had a great time. So this is going to be a small, like, sponsored book haul and talking about my affiliate link and stuff. So if you're interested to see what books I picked up, hint, hint, I am adding to my vampire collection because of course. So, let's get started with opening the packages. All right, so I've got my four books here that I just really put a lot of muscle into opening. Um, I did end up picking up an Octavia Butler book, and that would be Kindred. I know that this one is about like going back through time and different experiences. I'm not huge on time travel in books, but I recently read Fledgling by her, which is I think the last book she published, and a book that most people seem not to have read or heard of. And I really liked it, so I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up Kindred. It's another standalone. It's gonna allow me to buy some other books says Dana, a modern black woman is celebrating her 26th birthday. I'm 27, so it's nice to see a slightly older character. Um, I seem to be reading a lot of books where they're like late teens, early 20s, so. Um, she's with her new husband and she is snatched abruptly from her home in California and transported to the antebellum south. Rufus, the white son of a plantation owner, is drowning, and Dana has been summoned to save him. Dana is drawn back repeatedly through time to the slave quarters, and each time the stay grows longer, more arduous, and more dangerous until it is uncertain whether or not Dana's life will end long before it has a chance to begin. So, very interested in that. I've heard that Octavia Butler is a huge contributor to the sci-fi genre. Um, I don't know how much you would call vampire sci-fi so much as paranormal, but I like that I get to dive a little more into her sci-fi and still kind of seeing this interaction that this author is going to have with history. Because there is also some historical interaction in Fledgling as well, but I'm excited. Next, we have The Quiet Room. I have read this book before, which is why I was so excited to see a print copy, because unless you order it through Barnes & Noble or get like a used copy through Amazon, it is next to impossible to get your hands on a physical copy of The Quiet Room. This book is both a biography and an autobiography. So about Maybe a little more than half of this book was written by Laurie Schiller, who was diagnosed with schizophrenia. She goes in and out of these psychiatric centers. And other parts of this book were written by, 
I believe one of her doctors as well as some of her family members. So we're getting a bunch of different perspectives on this life of a person with schizophrenia, including her own. And I loved this book so much and the way it was set up, it's almost diary-esque, which I really appreciated. It's just, it's one of my favorite mental illness accounts that I've read and especially schizophrenia isn't something that I really get to read a lot or that I feel I have a good grasp on and this book really helped me to gain some understanding of that. Next is my vampire book that I picked up. This is The Vampire Tapestry. I believe I was doing a vampire readathon last year and I had been looking up vampire books and I put this on my list and I hadn't gotten it yet. And again, it's not one that I really see available a bunch of places, but finally got my hands on it. On the back here, it says Dr. Edward Wayland is nothing like your average vampire. Not only is he a respected anthropology professor, but his bloodlust stems from a biological rather than a supernatural source. The only member of a species of one, he has learned to form an uneasy empathy with his prey in order to survive, secretly thriving secretly thieving blood from his victims rather than murdering them outright. But even age-honed discretion can fail in the face of desperation." So it sounds really interesting that they're approaching this from a biological aspect. Um, I just, like, you have your traditional vampire stories and I really found myself drawn to the authors who do something a little different with the vampire genre. Like Matt Hag did that family of vampires where you can birth other vampires and the vampire kids just had no idea that they were vampires. Um, Fledgling did something different with having these like vampire families um, and you had like the women who lived together in one area and the men who lived together in another area and they had these very specific like mating rituals that kind of that, that really determined how they were going to interact with each other. I, I like those deeper looks into vampirism and how different authors explore that. So I'm really, really excited to read this. Last book I have here, again, is a book that I have never seen in print. And I have been wanting to read this since my first round of college. I would say I came across the name of this book in like 2012 and I've never found a physical copy even on Amazon. Like I don't love shopping through Amazon. I do shop through Amazon sometimes and even there it is really 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 hard to find a copy of this book. And so here it is, Trumpet by Jackie Kay. I am so excited to read this and see what it's about. I want to do a whole video eventually on books like this. So I've had people tell me like, oh, intersexuality doesn't exist. Let me tell you, it does. There's research. When you've produced as many beings in a species as we have, there are going to be some biological variants. <laughs> like it happens. It's genetics. Intersexuality is real. And I became fascinated with it whenever I was studying some of the academics of sex in my first round of college and really learning more about the world and different disciplines and stuff. I got uh, Bodies in Doubt, which is like a medical history of intersexuality and it's awful and it's fascinating. And I just, I think more people need to talk about this topic because in 2021, there are still people that I personally know that think that intersexuality just isn't a thing. And it's this way of living, this way of being, I guess not living, this way of being that has been erased in so many ways. And I did a paper, was it a year ago, on intersexuality around the world and the different ways that cultures approach it. Um, and I just, this is like one of those classic books with an intersexual character and I can never find a copy of it anywhere. And I wanna do a video soon-ish that's just about books with intersexual representation and my feelings on them and my thoughts on them. And I am so excited to finally have my hands on a copy of Trumpet by Jackie Kay. It has been years in the search. So I'll go ahead and read the back of this. The music of legendary jazz trumpeter Joss Moody touched the souls of all who listened. But his death exposes an extraordinary secret, one that he shared in life only with his beloved wife, Millie. 
When their adopted son, Coleman, learns the truth about his father, his rage compels him to collude with a tabloid journalist. Bez besieged by the press and overwhelmed with grief, Millie secludes herself in their remote seaside home. There, she seeks solace in treasured memories of her fiercely private marriage, while Coleman searches for answers that can resolve his resentment and confusion. The reminiscences of those who knew Joss Moody render a complex and moving portrait of two people whose shared life was founded on an intricate lie that preserved their family and their rare, unconditional love. So I'm guessing the dad was intersex, which is fine, but then you have these people who didn't know and feel lied to, which is a complex emotion and conversation that I'm not going to get into here, but I am so excited for this. Oh, so excited. So that is my little book haul of four books that I got with my coupon from Second Sale. They have some really great deals. I don't think a single one of these books was over maybe $7. Um, it's a great way to support a smaller business. It's a great way to make sure that books are still being read whether or not they're new. I do like to bring older books to my channel. Like, I've been reading a lot of newer books lately, but booktube and reading isn't just about what's new. It's also about let's dive into the old books. Let's dive into their problems. Let's dive into their stories. Let's see the evolution of writing. Let's see how we got here. And just explore the genres and the histories and I don't know. I'm rambling now, but the point is I am so, so excited. Thank you, Second Sale, for working with me on this video. If you are interested on purchasing some books with them, my affiliate link will be down below. Again, I get a small kickback from that, so thank you in advance. Please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. I will see all of you in my next video. Bye friends.